Hello, welcome little artist, Birdie here with a video on painting your March little joy box. We're going to start with the first project and that is the, uh, your door hanger. So welcome, if this is your first little joy box, I would encourage you to watch the first video on how to take care of your brushes and it also talks about all of the supplies in your starter kit and it's super important that we uh, learn how to properly care for our brushes, how to wash them and all of that. So take a few seconds, hit the pause button, go watch that video. You have a link um, to that video on your insert card that came with your box. Um, it'll take you right to it. Watch that. It's just a quick five minutes and then come back here to get started painting. Okay, great. All right, so uh, who's ready to paint? Uh, I am super excited. I love painting. It's one of my favorite things to do uh, on top of crafting and just doing anything creative. It's such a great hobby. So I'm so glad you're here with me today. Um, the first thing that we want to do before we get started painting is there's four things. One, we want to make sure that we have um, a protective uh, tablecloth on your table. Uh, it could be an old newspaper or an old tablecloth or um, just some paper or old wrapping paper, whatever you want to use. Just make sure that you're protecting your surface. Uh, you also need uh, a jar of uh, water to rinse your brushes. You're going to need some paper towels or an old rag or baby wipes or something because painting can be messy and we want to make sure to have something handy to clean up with. Plus, we need it to wash our brushes. Uh, then we need something to protect our clothes. So make sure that you're wearing painting clothes or an apron of some sort or whatever uh, you have. All right, so one last thing. Uh, we want to say the artist pledge. And this is important because we are all unique and we don't want to be too hard on ourselves. And so this just gets us in that right mindset before we start painting. So who's ready? Okay, all right, so repeat after me. I am one of a kind. I make art like nobody else. And I am proud of my art. Perfect. All right, let's get started. I'm going to switch this to the overhead camera and we will get started painting. Now remember, as I'm painting, I am just showing you how I would paint it, but you feel free to paint it however you want. So let's go over to the overhead. There we go. We've got all our supplies here. I've got my rag, my water. I've got my mixing chart, just in case I feel like mixing colors. I've also got the little paint uh, palette that comes with your kit so I can we can use that to mix colors with you also have a tray that comes with your paint and so you can use that tray to uh, mix colors on as well all right I'm gonna just start by carefully opening all my paint and putting the lids off to the side this month's colors are rainbow colors and so we're going to have lots of fun with these colors this month. Uh, we have the rainbow um, theme here. We've got um, our rainbow with our uh, leprechaun pot and then the word lucky underneath. So let's just get right into it. I'm going to use my large flat brush. So make sure you have your brushes out. You'll have your large flat and you'll have your uh, medium or your small round, and then you should have a, um, a medium round. So these are the three brushes. You also have this large brush in your kit. 
I'm not going to use that today. It's not really necessary. This is really great for when you're trying to cover a really large surface with one color. Um, and we've got a lot of detail work here, so I'm going to stick with my smaller brushes today. Okay, so let's get started. I'm just going to start by painting my rainbow. We'll start with red on the outside here. And you'll notice that we don't have every color of the rainbow in our pots, but you can definitely mix. Um, the only color we don't have is purple. And you can mix that with what we have here if you want to add purple. But our rainbow on our door hanger doesn't have all the lines for the rainbow. I'm just kind of getting some of the colors of the rainbow in. But again, you can um, add another line at the end if you wanted to add that purple or in between. However you want to do it. Now all of the door hangers also come with these score marks they're called and they're little etched lines in the wood. So that makes it really easy to follow the lines. Um, and if we accidentally paint over them because they're etched into the wood or scored into the wood, it makes it super easy to see them even after we paint over them. All right, one part done. I'm going to do a quick wash, swish, 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 tap, 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 and then we squeeze it in our rag. So after red, red, yellow, orange, red, orange, yellow. We'll do orange next. So who knows the uh, Roy G. Biv acronym or uh, name for the rainbow? When I was growing up, that was how we learned the placement of the rainbow colors. So Roy G. Biv. Roy is spelt R-O-Y, which is red, orange, yellow. G, Roy G Biv, so G is the green, so that's what comes after yellow. And Biv, B-I-V. And that stands for blue, indigo, and violet. So for our rainbow today, I'm leaving out indigo and violet. But you could definitely mix your blue and your red to get purple, as it shows at the very top of our color mixing chart. And you can just scoop a little bit out and put it in your pot and mix that up if you want to use that color. All right, so then the next color is yellow. So we'll put that in next. It's starting to slowly become spring, which means we're going to have some rainfall, some storms, and it's always fun to try and find the rainbow after it rains. Sometimes we see two rainbows, sometimes only one, or sometimes a partial. Maybe we just see a small little section of it. And sometimes the colors are so blurred, it's hard to see all the colors. I typically can see the reds and the oranges, but as we get down the rainbow, those colors such as blues and purples kind of get blended together and it's hard to see those ones. Rainbow has to be super bright and super uh, big for me to see those colors. All right, so then we'll go green next.
And as you're painting your rainbow, if you find that you keep kind of bringing those other colors into the color you're working on, maybe you accidentally grab a little bit of that yellow, um, that's okay. You can just let it dry and then come back in and repaint over that area. Um, but if it happens a lot, you might just want to let your rainbow dry real quick and then move on to the next color so you don't keep pulling in that wet paint. The more you paint, the more practice you're going to get. And practice helps us get better by holding our brushes. It gets easier to paint straight lines. So don't worry if it's not perfect. And like I said, as we're looking at rainbows, sometimes those colors are blurred together. And so sometimes it's okay to just have a little bit of a mix of the blue and the green or the green and the yellow all the way to the end. There's a little blending, but that's okay. All right, we've got our rainbow in. Now I'm going to uh, mix a color. So I'm gonna want, I want my lucky down here to be a light green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, grab my brush here and I'm gonna scoop up some of that green paint and drop it off into this little pot here. So I'm gonna get two scoops of paint. And then I'm gonna wash my brush, get that green off. And then I'm gonna grab some white and scoop that into my little pot. And we'll get two pots of white. And then we'll mix that together and we'll get a light green. And I'm gonna use that to paint my lucky word down here. I think having a different color green is gonna look really pretty. You could always just paint this white as well and kind of make it look like clouds at the end of the rainbow. You could paint clouds on it. You could paint it blue and then put clouds on top. You could paint it green like we're doing now and then come back in and add a little bit of yellow to the gold color. Lots of different ways to do it. There we go, the word lucky. Okay, now I'm going to wash my brush. And I'm going to mix another color. I'm going to mix a purple. So I'm going to get my blue pot. I'm going to scoop up a little bit of the blue, drop it in my pot here. Okay. And I'll do a quick wash. And then I'm going to grab some red. And I'm making purple because I'm gonna paint my pot purple. My pots are usually black, um, but I'm gonna do mine a super dark purple. So I'll mix those two colors. I've got this really, really dark purple. Now, depending on how much red or how much blue you add will determine the color of the purple. 
it's kind of fun to see how different colors blended together can give us different looks. This is more of an indigo color and it kind of resembles the uh, black pot. And I'm just going to paint right over this shamrock here and then I'll come back after my purples dry and paint that little shamrock green. Because I'll still be able to see that little shamrock right through the purple. Okay, and there we go. All right, this one's almost done. Wash my brush. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I'm going to switch to my liner brush. And while this is drying, I'm going to add a little bit of white to my Lucky. So I'm going to grab my liner brush and I'm just going to outline where those the letters are those score marks that indicate what each letter is so we've got the l we've got the u the c the k and so you'll see those little score marks and so i'm using those as a guide to create some outlines here and it's just going to help my letters stand out a little bit and you could paint right inside those. So you could have a green outline and then paint inside each of these letters a different color. And that would be cute too. You could paint each letter a different color. So you could create a rainbow below as well as um, the rainbow on top. When you're using your liner brush, make sure to use a light pressure so you get a thin line. When you're, br when you're painting, you can get different brush strokes with different pressure. And when I say pressure, I mean how hard you're pushing down on your brush. So if you push down really hard, even though you're using a smaller brush, you're gonna get a thick line. You just want to use a light pressure. You're just barely touching the surface and that will give you a thin line. And you could always uh, use a marker if you want. If you have markers, you could add those in and use the marker to do an outline. Sometimes markers are a little bit easier. There's lots of times in my art where I have special markers that I'll use to create really thin lines. And remember, if you mess up, you can always go back and repaint something if you don't like it. All you have to do is let the paint completely dry and you can just paint right over it and change it completely. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna do a quick wash and then I'm gonna go to my green. I'm still using just my liner brush because this is a little bit of, this is a smaller item that I'm painting. And so I do want to be careful and use my small liner brush so I can get around all the small areas of the shamrock.
And there we go. All right, one last thing. I'm gonna add some white lines, kind of like highlight lines or lines where the sun is reflecting off the pot. So I'm going back into that white and I'm just gonna do a quick little brush stroke, kind of a, just kind of around the top and the edges. And that's just gonna make it look like there's sun reflecting off those parts of the pot. You can get a little bit on your handle. Okay, and then we can add maybe a few white lines inside the shamrock here just to help that stand out. Sometimes just adding little white lines around our elements kind of just helps them stand out against the other colors. Okay, and then you can also do the same to the rainbow. Just kind of add a white line around the outside areas. Now following those score marks. And there we go. There's your cute little door hanger for St. Patrick's Day. And the last thing that you're going to do is once this is completely dry, you're going to take your string that's in your kit, you'll put it in the hole here, and then we're going to gather those two ends like this. I'm going to wrap them around my finger, go around the back. So I've got that little loop right here that I've created. I'm going around the back with those two pieces up through the hole here and creating a knot. And now I've got a way to hang my door hanger. You have your um, hook with that you've installed somewhere, whether that's on your door or somewhere in your room. And then you're just gonna hook that in there, switch out your door hanger or your art, and you're ready to go. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoy painting your door hanger. I will visit with you in the next video. Bye.